Hello, my name's Andy, this is Jenny. This is our motorhome. It used to be uh, an NHS ambulance. It's a Mercedes 519 3 litre V6 Sprinter. We got this approximately a year ago. Been working on it most weekends. Welcome to the van, come and have a look. The kitchen I started making by myself. I started framing it out, but then that got a bit too bit too complex for me. I'm not um, a carpenter, I'm an electrician by trade. So we ended up scrapping that and we actually just went to a well-known uh, builder's merchant and we just bought the actual kitchen as you would do for a normal house. Uh, we've had to adjust it slightly because the camper van ovens are not a 600 or 500. This one was about a 540. So we had to reduce one of the cupboards down, but I managed to do that. Um, all the tiling is only a stick on tiling it's it just peels off and you just stick it on and it gives quite a nice effect it's all washable and it's supposed to be heat proof as well these are all kitchen cupboards which were originally floor cupboards but we've just turned them on the side because it, it they fit quite well all the accessories we bought were just from online online suppliers the sink is online supplier. Um, we've got a 100 water, 100 litre water supply underneath the, the, the truck with a free bar pressure pump, which gives us adequate instant hot water and it gets very hot very quick. In here, we've got our shower our shower cubicle we've got a normal porta potty toilet which we just if we want to we just pull that out when we have an awning on we will have a, a little toilet tent and that will go in there and the, the shower is again with mains pressure it gives a really nice shower obviously only having a hundred liters you just got to be a little bit careful of how much you actually use at a time because places like this where we're at now we might find it a bit difficult to get water to top up but the 100 litres would do us for approximately two to three nights without having to resource it. The fridge, 12 volt fridge, most important for the wine. Fire extinguisher which is compulsory now. We've got a night diesel heater. It did actually come with one, but we actually changed the unit to one of the Chinese ones that we found it superb. Only cost us 75 pound, rather than about four or 500 pound for the original one. And literally everything's controlled here. We've got the lights, lights for the bathroom, the extractor fan. Um, each one of these stars, we've got USB sockets around. We've got the inverter, which will give us our 240 supply. Uh, we didn't go for a TV because I didn't want one of them rattling around. So we opted for a, a projector. So when we're laying in bed, we've got the projector up there, a little projector, which is all Wi-Fi, and we've got access to Netflix, YouTube, and eventually this unit will actually be hidden inside the head there so you won't actually see none of that you wouldn't see any of the cable but again everything is work in progress all the lights are only i think one watt each it doesn't draw a lot of power off the battery this is only its third outing now and we haven't had to use mains power it's totally self-sufficient when we got the van it was a fully equipped ambulance it had the stretcher all the seat all the medical equipment all the cabinets was all ablance but looking at a load a load of um people that we've seen on youtube because this had a genesis system built in the wire inside of it was quite a difficult job to try and get over some of the hurdles so took advice and actually ripped out everything said it was bare shells the whole thing was completely gutted all the wiring was taken out and we started again the first thing we wanted to do was basically get the framework in of where we wanted everything to see if everything would fit. So because of the back doors opening and if we wanted the bed, 
we wanted to have a nice view out the back doors because both back doors open. So the bed frame went in first. Then we decided where we wanted all the water facilities, which took a little while to work out because it's rooting the pipework. If you drop the pipework underneath the chassis, you had everything in the way, like the fuel tank. So that took a bit of planning. So we found that the sink and all the water would go on the bulkhead. So it just, the sink would run underneath the shower and then the waste tank is roughly where you're standing now. Um, all the gas supply that we've done, we put into an external cupboard because you're not allowed to have a gas boiler inside a camper van. So that went into an external cupboard. So then from there, we planned out where the oven was going to go, where the hob was going to go, where the grill was going to go. From there, we basically done all the wiring. Um, because we'd done the wiring from new, we knew the wiring was good. We weren't using secondhand wiring or the ambulance wiring because you don't know the history of it. So if you notice all these cases, they, they basically hide all the wiring from the battery compartments, which are underneath here, which were original. All these are taking all the power supplies all the way around. The table bolts onto here. We've got a full size table that will actually hold four people. Uh, and then we use this for extra storage. I've got all my tools. Uh, we've got medical equipment underneath there as well. Uh, spare drinking water. And yeah, basically stuff like that. Cool. Right, underneath the two benches, we've got our storage. This is absolutely perfect for hiding all the bedding. Uh, also got our water pump. Wall pump and wiring underneath here. Still work in progress. Want to box all this off. It's ideal for the bedding to, to be hidden. And we put all our clothes underneath there as well whilst we're traveling. To make the bed, we just pull these out. And open up the back doors now because I need Need room. Right, this is our electrical cupboard. Still work in progress. This is our solar controller. We've got two 300 watt panels on the roof at the moment. 35 volts at the moment, which has kept our batteries at still at 13.9. We've kept the original batteries that come with the ambulance. We've got three uh, 110 milliamp batteries, which are still located in the original place. With that, we've still got the original inverter uh, 1,800 watt inverter to give us all our 230. Then we've got the original battery chargers that come with the ambulance. This charges up all four batteries. We've got the three leisure batteries underneath the back there, which I've just shown. We've got a spare leisure battery underneath the bonnet and it also uh, charges up the main engine battery. In here, for now, I've just put this on to protect it. We've got all the 12 volt stuff. We also got a switch over. So when we're on mains hookup, as soon as we pull that out, it automatically transfers and takes the powers from the battery. Um, all the light switches are all off the DC side. And also this is where we brought the water through from before me saying about the water had to be worked out because I couldn't go underneath the chassis because of all the fuel tank. So from the sink, it drops down. It goes behind the shower tray, which I've left a little gap, especially for it. It comes down, picks up the trap from the shower. Another reason I wanted it there as well, we can always access the, sh the shower trap. If you have it fixed and it all blocks up, the last thing you want to do is take a shower out. So we can have full access to there. And then it drops down to the waste tank, which is the grey tank, which is underneath the camper there 
that's about 58 litre this is our gas cupboard we've actually fitted in LPG so we can go to a petrol station and actually top up the LPG without having to replace the tanks I've got two six kilo gas flow tanks with a auto changeover this is our boiler uh, 16 litres a minute this will produce cheap as chips there's a lot of is it good is it bad because they're not vented again because it's in a, an external cupboard and the cupboard at the top there is vented at the top and for the dropout at the bottom that's literally on the, f the level with the floor in here if there's any gas flow because LPG is heavier than air it drops down so you want it to vent out outside rather than build up potentially having a, a fire when you build these we've got a, a sniffer which will actually smell for gas so we have this running and inside the inside the cab we would actually sniff around all the joints to make sure that there's no gas or leakage from co2 getting into the cab but these cheap as chips they work out around about 125 pound and they do the job superbly from there we have a manifold which i've got isolators on each of them one isolator would do the actual um, the boiler itself one would do the hob and one would do the oven when we're traveling we just turn everything off and we would turn the bottles off as well and for extra safety we'll actually turn them off when we're asleep so there's no risk of leakage from the actual bottles they cost about we filled these up from empty actually a couple of weeks ago they cost us 12 pound to fill up both tanks where they would cost about about 30 35 pound to replace each tank um, i've always wanted to do an ambulance um, i've been talking about it on and off about the last seven or eight years um, i needed basically what happened about four years ago i had quite a serious car accident um, i had a head-on with another vehicle lucky enough i survived i'm here now but it brought on a condition called fibromyalgia which got brought on by shock or trauma of the crash um, so i do have problems with basically my muscles and my joints feel like they're under attack all the time um, it's almost like having pins and needles throughout the entire body with that it also brings on rheumatoid arthritis um, because the brain thinks every joint is under attack it produces fluid and puts fluid to the joints again which is rheumatoid arthritis so I'm very limited to what I can do um, there's some days I can't even get out of bed my works who I work with now are very understanding if I need time off because I can feel it coming on over say a two-day period I can actually be at home and just rest I only work four days a week um, but this is something with with the pain which is constant every single day i couldn't just sit there and dwell on it i had to actually do something to keep busy took my mind off off the pain so this is what i've i've done from it's taken me a year to do yes it has been blood sweat and tears but anybody that can follow simple instructions even from youtube most of this is from youtube following diff different people and there's loads of different people i've followed and they've given me so many good ideas um, anybody can do this um, if we're looking at the cost of side of things the actual ambulance when i got it was three thousand four hundred pound interior and to do what i've done so far i've only put about three and a half thousand possibly four into it uh van life uh this is our only our third outing in in the van our, this is our first van life meeting or any kind of meeting like this where we've got must be nearly over 200 vehicles with us um it that that the good thing you meet different people we've already now um signed up to about four more different groups so it looks like every weekend for the rest of the year we can go to different events um the people here have just been fantastic so if you like van life you like meeting people come come to these it's you know we did have our doubts what's it going to be like but unbelievable the people here are absolutely lovely from all kind of walks of life 
So, yeah, get your van, come out and join us and say hello. You may have noticed that you can buy our ebook. Our ebook shows you how to build a van conversion. It has 190 pages of text, diagram, and images showing you various options or various systems. It also comes with 25 videos that show you hands-on how to do many parts of building a van. Also, we have a course. The course is really in-depth. It shows you everything from how to use basic tools all the way through to doing your gas, your water, and your electric installation. Not only that, but within the course, we support you hands-on in making your electrical specification. And you get to join a community of like-minded van builders who are building their vans at exactly the same time. Follow the links to find out more and thanks for watching.